What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Snow Plus. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about the recent layoffs that we've seen in the gaming industry, and I want to talk about why I believe they're happening, why I don't think it's uh, it's going all that well going into the future, but kind of just get it out into one thing, right? Because you have, like, the deviation games. We had Pixel Opus being shut down. Just today, I saw a news story of that Witcher team that's making, I believe, the multiplayer game that had to basically be restarted. There was that news story a while ago, right, that they were doing a multiplayer thing, but something wasn't going right. Well, that team has suffered layoffs. So instead of making videos every time a company lays off people, which I really don't want to do, I kind of want to just put it all into one little thing to talk about it. So well, I want to start with obviously a pretty generic thing. I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat or anything, but the whole idea of it sucks when people lose their jobs, right? The world right now is not doing so great. So anytime you have, uh, well, whether it's one person or whether you have these 50 or 90 people at Deviation Games, you never want to see at least the good hardworking, like people that are trying their best, right? You never want to see people losing their jobs, especially in the world that uh, we're in and we're heading towards. People are going to need, you know, need that income. So that definitely sucks. And I wish those people all the best and hope they land on their feet. And there are still a lot of jobs being offered. And I, I want to keep that in mind, I guess, when I make this video, as I'm talking through all these companies, you know, eliminating, there are still, if you go on pretty much any gaming site's job page, there are still plenty of jobs out there. You may have to move, you may have to, you know, or maybe you can work remotely, but there are positions out there and hopefully people find uh, find their way. Now, on the other side of things, I don't think it's a great sign for the future. Now, I am one that does like accountability. So, I've talked about this with like Hollywood and stuff in the past. I actually prefer as Hollywood is crumbling to its death, right? These writers, not like the writers in the writing strike, but writers or directors that just have like strings of just absolute garbage, why they are allowed to continue and why they are sometimes even given promotions, I never understand. I think it's like the politics of Hollywood versus the talent. I think you should be rewarded or I guess not rewarded based off your talent level. If you're doing good things, you should be rewarded. If you're consistently doing bad, and you can put the blame on that person, which is different than the gaming industry, then I think you should be, uh, well, not rewarded, whatever, I guess the opposite, punished, I guess would maybe the opposite of it. But for the gaming industry, I guess what's hard is you can never fully know because there's so much secrecy, you can never fully know where to put the blame, right? So when a studio, like say The Witcher, we'll use that recent example of today. So this multiplayer game, something went wrong. They had to basically restart it from scratch. So they canceled whatever that game was and they're, they're doing it over. So whose fault was that, right? I mean, there should be accountability 100%, but the issue is a lot of times, at least in the gaming industry, some decisions come from like the top down. So maybe executives kind of paint the way forward and then when they don't get exactly as they envisioned it, then it falls to the workers, the people at the team, and they are the ones that are fired or they don't get the raises or whatever. But I mean, it's a reoccurring thing, right? You see deviation games. Now, what happened there? Well, we don't really really know the odds are that Sony saw the game and said not good enough that's not up to our bar now I'm not defending Sony like at least fully I'm going to defend them at least a little bit though right because if they say well we want it here we're funding your game or we're giving you money or you know however that broke down and the game is just not where we want it to be well that I mean, that ultimately is the agreement that you signed up for and then you're I guess punished in terms of pulling the funding or again whatever happened there there resulted in all these people leaving so again that sucks 90 people left that team or got fired i guess from that team uh, which is more than half of that studio that studio is in major major trouble right i doubt that game releases maybe it does but it's just to me highly unlikely and at this point it's just hopefully you save the studio hopefully you can kind of rebound and do something else at a much smaller scale uh, and that's kind of all that's left but there are a lot of parallels so you know again when you think about hollywood and the future of it you don't have endless amounts of money. Hollywood for a long time had basically endless amounts of money. And when the economy is doing good, you can spend what you basically don't have, right? And so that's what happened that we saw in Hollywood. Now the money's run out and 
you know, there's a lot of stuff happening there, obviously, right? But hopefully there is accountability where people aren't going to be put in the exact same positions that they failed on so many times. Now, in the gaming industry, sadly, I've said this as well, like, and I don't want to make this too, too political, but it's why I just want to put in one video and get it out of the way and then not speak about it, you know, a lot in the future. You know, the recession, a recession is coming. It's basically already here. Things are not going great, and they're definitely not going to go great in the future. You're already seeing companies kind of uh, embrace that, I guess, if you want to say it like that. But, you know, they're getting ready for it. So whether I believe Xbox did a thing where they're not giving bonuses, uh, you know, there were layoffs. So what Microsoft did the 10,000 employee thing. Again, you've had Sony do a couple things here and there. Um, and obviously you just had The Witcher and many other examples. I mean, there's game studios that are closing and people are being fired. This is kind of widespread. And yes, it's happened before, but as things continue to go, the issue is the gaming industry has only, what it's really only ever known, is growth. The gaming industry has just grown for so, so long over such a period of time. And remember, the gaming industry is more profitable and is a bigger industry than Hollywood. It's overtaken movies. It's overtaken pretty much everything. The gaming industry is where it's at. And I think largely that will continue, but it's never seen anything other than growth. And, and you could even argue, well, while studios get shut down and stuff, you still have people kind of just running around getting investments and creating their own studios just like that, right? Even when you have studios closing, those people just go somewhere else. Well, what happens as things continue to get worse, which I imagine they will, and not only do you have to do these kind of analyses or you know whatever, you have to look really critically at these studios, but then also people aren't going to be hiring as much, right? What happens when both of those things happen at the same time? They're not really happening right now, but I think they will happen in the future. So it definitely, again, sucks what's been going on. It seems like it's like quickening is that is that a word it feels like it's going a lot faster right like we're getting these things one at one after the other seems like sony is doing some sort of like quarterly review again not full defending them or defending the studio kind of in the middle i think some of what's going on and even this witcher thing i mean you understand it but again the thing that sucks and is so difficult with the gaming industry nobody knows who to blame and you hear it from like the talent like the people who make the game so often but like it's at some point, I really would prefer these people rise up, put their money where their mouth is, and like tell us who's the blame. And not like vague terms, like specifically throw people under the bus. I know that's probably not super popular in modern day, just like in general, social media, all that stuff to kind of give people up. But you know, the whole like working man and everybody's so like powerful and has their own rights, but nobody really says who's to blame. So when a game is say bad, I know that's subjective, but say when a game kind of gets like panned throughout, say like a Redfall situation, I think most people would, you know, look at it and say that was a huge problem who is literally to blame for that were there executives that put them on and i and then you have to start breaking it down who told them to do certain things so you look at again i mean redfall and that studio technically i don't think has experienced any layoffs or anything so i guess they're safe but you look maybe at this witcher multiplayer thing well they lost people that studio just lost people Whose fault was it? Like, why was it multiplayer? Who decided that? What is it like guaranteed that that was going to work? And then what was the multiplayer vision, right? It's so much harder, I think, in the gaming industry because you got executives meddling. I guess you have that in Hollywood too, but I don't know. Some directors completely have their say. You know, well, if the writing is terrible, well, there are literally writers. Now, in gaming, there's that too, but you don't know how much of that is influenced, I guess, again, by did executives kind of give it? We do know in the gaming industry that like large topics in the games, like largely where the game is going, sometimes that is pitched by the executives and given. I think that was said, um, there was a writer who worked in like the DC space and she had kind of come out to say, that's, that's how it goes. If something like say Superman is evil, that doesn't come from the writers. Now maybe the arc of that comes from the writers, but telling them that Superman needs to be evil, that actually comes from people above. So again, like we need we need those names. Like those are the people that should be held accountable. And yet it's the team that ends up being, you know, completely destroyed. So it's messy. It's sad, honestly. But at the end of the day, 
the t- talents, like people that are legitimately talented, people that are good, I think, well, obviously a recession hurts pretty much everybody and there's no really getting around it. But I think the people that are truly talented, they will find work at least right now, right when deviation loses these people. The best of the best, I think, will find spots and then we'll see if uh, if anybody else does. And ultimately, though, again, you got to figure out who who is to blame in these situations. I mean, I think I think that's very important. I don't know. I think that's maybe like not modern where it's like, well, nobody's to blame. Like it was just situational. I think that's more of like a modern day take where there is no blame and it's just everybody's problem even though nobody did anything. I don't like that. I think people need to take accountability for what they've done, not cancel them like social media wise, but just, you know, own up to what you did and uh, work through it or never do that again. And if you have a string of doing the same bad thing over and over, and if you are, again, like, you know, I mentioned Hollywood, that's why for me, it's easier. If you have a director that fails multiple times in a row, well, maybe something's wrong with that director. You know, maybe not, I guess, but that you could like single it out. You can single out the writers. Well, does this writer have a portfolio of 10 in a row where it's just complete garbage? Well, maybe that writer sucks. Why do they keep getting jobs, right? So the gaming industry, I think, is a little bit more complex and it's harder to judge because of it. So let me know what you guys think. Hopefully, you know, this did something. I don't know. I kind of just went off. Um, but again, I think just wanted to put all these kind of thoughts into one video. Leave it alone that way. Unless some huge studio loses like everybody or like a studio gets shut down. Largely, I don't cover this stuff. I don't really want to. And uh, we'll just leave it there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all on the next one.